washer. Did I do a washer yet with you? They did oh. a washer, yeah. not the we started. inner. Okay, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah, weren't we doing it like where it was reflected over the y axis? That's the one I want to go over. Or a line that's parallel to the y axis. Because isn't yeah. that like wall minus wall as opposed to C minus minus one? Party? Yeah, like the party's up oh, here or something? The, uh, we're, 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 that's where we're at, the party. I want a party. Okay. Yeah. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. Of course I want a party. Okay, so the one that I want to go over with you goes. It goes like this. Okay? okay. So it's y equals x squared from 0 to 2. And I want to go about the y axis. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did we not finish the 2? I don't think we finished the 2. I had everything set up except for the integrate, interval by it, right? You, you just got the equation set up. Okay, so, so we want to do... <laughs> We'll switch gears for a second. So we want to do y equals x squared, x uh -huh. equals 0 to x equals 2, right. about the x equals 2 line. So about right. this guy here. Mm -hmm. All right? So if we do that, what you end up with, if I kind of look at it that way, is you end up with a Hershey's Kiss upright. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So you end up with the visual of a Hershey's Kiss that's upright. Now, question to you, is it a solid Hershey kiss, or is there a hollow in the middle? Yes. It's solid because there's no um, space that's missing in between. It's filled all the way in. Filled all the way through, right. Yeah. So it's what we call the disk method. Pi times the integral from A to B of R squared. Very good. And R is like ceiling minus floor, but in this case would be wall minus wall. Yeah. Right. Well, there we go. So here's the deal. Everything, if I'm going to go this way, if I'm having a party, okay, if everything goes around in the Y, um, about a Y axis like this, okay, it's vertically uh, rotating, then I know that everything, everything must be in terms of Y. Did I create that little chart for you yesterday? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if you look on that, it says uh, either disc or vertical, I mean disc or, or a washer, yeah. and then it says under vertical DY. What I mean by that is everything must be in terms of y, okay? So if I'm looking at this, um, you gave me a, the, the proper formula here. Pi doesn't change. A to B, okay? Yeah. If I'm rotating horizontally, my A and my B are 0 and 2. Your wall, wall. Because yeah. I'm going this way, what are my, um, what are my constraints now going to be? Well, what hmm. is it when I plug x is 0 in? I get y is what? 0. When I plug x is 2 in, what do I get? Y is 4. So I am now going to go from 0 to 4. Okay? When I say everything must be in terms of y, everything must be in terms of y. Now, I, did I have you tilt your head? Yeah. Um, I typically say to the right. And so what you're doing is, I think you would recognize that from here to here, is going to be the radius of that potential circle. <coughs> if I went all the way across, it'd be the diameter, but from here to here is a radius. So what you're going to do now is this becomes your ceiling. This becomes your floor. Okay? So it's... Um, so now the edge of it. So this thing here is my ceiling. It's where the top of the red line happens. And if you're tilting your head, this is definitely the top. Now, because we're squaring it, it doesn't matter if you do the wrong ceiling if that makes sense. If you pick that as your ceiling and that as your floor, you're squaring it. It comes back to the same result anyway. Okay? So, what would my ceiling be if I'm tilting my head? What is this line called? 2. 2. Very Minus good. x squared. So, 2. Now, he just said x squared. In a normal world, if I'm not partying, that's cool. But because I'm partying, everything must be in terms of, of y. Right. So, so, what is it? Square root of y. Right, the square root of y is x. So now I've solved for it. So rather than x squared, which is what you said, we're going to put the square root of y. Does that make sense? Yes, I think. <laughs> you think it does? And then we're going to square it. It's just kind of confusing when you have that tilted like that. Crazy, yeah. Yeah, it's tilted because it is vertically rotating. Yes. Like how many um, types of problems are going to be like this? Well, that's really a good question because yesterday I came up with a funny, I think, Anyway, so I said, very, very far and few between do they have vertical rotations, okay? 
Um, but I always like to introduce it. I've only seen it once or twice, maybe three times total. Um, but I don't want you to have a surprise party. Ooh. Oh my god. Bad. Uh, that was bad. No. Uh, yeah. It was funny. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I liked it. Thank I mean, yeah, we wouldn't want that. No, we wouldn't want a surprise party. You're right. You can also call the surface tank if you want to party me. I thought it was funny. <laughs> if I can laugh at myself, I'm cool. So, <laughs> I'm going to go from zero to four. Yeah. Now, remember, when doing this problem, we have dy, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the deal. Do the algebra, as much algebra as you can before you integrate, okay? So, in this case, what is the algebra going to be? Four minus y. Oh, I'd love to say yes, but break my heart. When I have to four. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, um, that mistake happens a lot. I see a binomial, I see squared, I know I have to FOIL it. For some reason, I want to put the twos in and be done with it. So you can't, you actually have to FOIL it out. So really what I'm FOILing is two minus y to the one half times two minus y to the one half, right? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I clean her up a little bit, two times two four. is four. four. And then negative, two, negative two y to the one half minus two y to the one half is minus four. Minus four. Y. Four. To the one half, and then last but not least, negative y to one half times negative y to the one half. Y to positive. the three halves. Good, good thought process. It's just y. Can you tell me why? Wait. Yeah. Because I'm doing what to it? I'm squaring it, right? So it's one half to the second, and a power of power I multiply, right? Because think about it this way: y to the one half times y to the one half. Keep the base. Add your exponents. Oh, it, right. that's what I'm thinking, but for some reason, three halves is stuck in my head from when we did from the, else from the integrals. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay. So, plus, yeah, we'll get there eventually. So we have plus uh, y. Now, can I easily take the integral? Yes. Why would I not want to use um, the use substitution method here? Be because it's squared. And if I can square it, I would rather square it. Less mistakes kind of thing. Okay, and plus you really don't want to use use substitution with this because it's got a square root inside. It just causes more chaos. So first of all, don't forget your pi. Pi must go for the ride. Yes. And then your integral is 4y. Four y. y. People would like to say 4x because we're used to that, but it's 4y minus 4y. <coughs> Give me the answer. Y, um, 4 y to the 3 halves That's over cool. 3 halves, which is 2 thirds times 4, so that would be um, 8 thirds y to the 3 halves. Perfect. And you wanted your 3 halves. That's yep. why I gave you that limelight. And then what's the next one? y squared. Yep. Over okay. 2. Yeah. I yep. dropped the ball. All right, are we good? Integration is done. We're going to assess it from 0 to 4. Yep. Okay. So, when we plug in the 4, I'm going to get, pi goes for the ride, I'm going to get 4 times 4 minus, you told me 8 thirds, and then 4, four to the 3 halves, mm -hmm. plus 4 squared over 2. Now what I need to do is look at the 0. What does 0 do to it? Makes it 0. It makes it 0, so it really doesn't matter, but check that before you assume. Okay? Right. So it's just minus 0. Now we've got math to do, some yep. fun math, right? So we've got pi goes for the right, 16, mm. and four. the square root of 4 is two. 2 to the third is eight. 8. Times 8 is 64 over 3. Right. Plus 16 over 2. Which is 8. eight. Yeah. So next one is um, 8 plus 16 is 24. So keep working the magic here. So 24 minus 64 thirds, you guys have a calculator, I have the brain, right? 24 times 3 would be 72. I got 2 and 2 thirds pi. Did you? 16 minus For what? The whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because that's going to be 72 minus 64 is 8, 8 thirds, right? 2 and 2 thirds, right? Good job. That's the, the whole kit caboodle. That's it. <laughs> the whole kit and caboodle. So, although, you guys will agree with me in a minute, this one looks simpler, more simple. Sim whatever that word is supposed simpler. to be. Is it simpler? I, think it I don't know. Simpler. That works for simpler. me too. Simpler. 
as I thank God I teach my own time. So although visually this rotation looks easier, there we go, easier than what we're going to do here, the actual calculus of this was a little bit more intense than yeah. what we're going to see here. I think you're going to like that. Yes. Are you going to put one of those on that test? Uh -huh, probably. Yeah. It may not be X squared. Because that's what we've been working with, but we, your, your packet has all the different variations. So we're going to kind of work on that. Once I'm done with this, we're going to start working packet problems. Yeah. Are there any um, examples in the packet where you reflected over the y-axis? I don't know that answer. We'll look. If not, I'll find some. Okay. Again, very far and few between, but I didn't want you to have a... It's good to know it. A surprise okay. party. Yes. Will they always say about the y-axis? They'll say rotation it? about um, 360 degrees. We'll talk about how they reference it. Okay, now, the next one I want to do is this guy here. Okay, so this one is going to be y equals x squared from 0 to 2 about the y-axis, rotation about the y-axis of 360 degrees, however they call it. Yeah. So, what does it look like? So, it's kind of, if I continue to draw this, because it's rotating this way. Kind of like that, right? Mm -hmm. And do you agree uh, if it kind of shows the rotation happening? It kind of looks like a bowl. It's hollow. It's, but it's hollow. And yesterday, people, some people were having issues with trying to figure out, um, is it disc or is it washer, right? So it's washer. Because if I think about this as chocolate, which I do, right? So if I think of this part as solid chocolate, as it starts to rotate around, this is all chocolate. Now, if I'm eating it, this stuff in here is definitely not chocolate. It's a hollow. It's like a bread bowl, but it's chocolate. Like bread bowl, but chocolate but you know, it's like a perfect scenario. Just it's empty space. <laughs> It's like the Easter Bunny, though. Are you getting the full of, uh, the full effect of chocolate, or are you biting the head off and it's hollow inside? So in this case, it's hollow. So we have to be careful. That's not part of our volume. Okay. Right. So we are having a party. So we're going to go pi, and you guys now recognize that there's a hollow. So it's outer radius squared minus inner radius squared. So what are my a and my b in this particular case? Your a is um, we plug in. Zero and four. Why is zero and why is four? Yeah, because remember, everything must be in terms of y. So it's going to go from zero to four. That's perfect. And it's because it's going around this way. Okay. Now, you're tilting your head to the right, and you're going to figure out what your outer radius is. Your outer radius goes from here all the way to the line of rotation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your inner radius goes from here all the way to the line of rotation. So you're going to subtract the big one minus small one, and you're left with the, the piece of chocolate. Right, right. So we're going to start with this. We're going to start with this. What is this called? That is... The ceiling now is this. X equals 2. two. That is 2, right. And then what is the floor? Zero. X zero. equals 0. So it's 2 minus 0 squared. Okay. That's my outer radius. So 2 minus 0 squared minus the inner radius. The square root of y minus 0. So the square root of y minus 0 squared dy. Why are you squaring everything? Because it's outer radius squared minus inner radius squared. Truly what we're making when we rotate it are circles, and we're finding the areas of the circles. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I was just taking the outer, this guy here, the circles, uh, the circle that we're referencing is the outside one, but we want to get rid of this inside hollow. That's why the squared. Because remember, it's pi r squared. So now let's clean it up algebraically a bit first. So we have what? Two squared, which is four. four. And what's the square root of y squared? Y. Y, right? So y dy. So easy compared to that one over there. Yeah. So what do we get? Pi, and if I integrate, I got 4y four four y minus, minus y squared over 2. From 0 to 4. The 0 doesn't do anything, so you just plug in your 4 for right. y. And just make sure of that, right? Don't, don't be complacent. So if I'm plugging in my 4, I got my pi that goes for the right. I've got 16 minus 4 squared over 2, which is 8, Yep. for an answer of 8 pi. Hmm. What problem would be when a 0 does count? Wouldn't it be like if it's a, a new substitution. Plus. U substitution, the zero counts. So, so why is that so with a zero? Because typically, something like that, you would be plugging in your zero. Normally, your zero plugged in cancels it out because it's just 
a variable to a, an exponent. Mm -hmm. But if I plug in zero here, it doesn't cancel it out. You it's still have negative zero one. Minus one, and then and that's a really bad sample. Okay, zero one. plus one. <laughs> now I can do it. <laughs> but you see, the zero wouldn't cancel it out. If you have a number that doesn't have an x attached to it, then that would right. make if a difference. Right. It looks a singleton like this. It's good to go. Yeah. All right. So let's do problems from your worksheet. Y'all have the worksheet from last um, last week. Miss, okay. So, October, November 2003, part II. Okay. I did that one. I got the wrong answer. Well, let's do it then. Then we can figure out why. And part I was kind of review, but I know how to do that. You did? Yeah. Oh, you did. Okay, I need the original. Yeah, somehow mine. Number nine. My new home. Number nine. October, November 2003, number nine. Sheet of paper out. Let's see. That's a good question. I say yes, and then I'm not sure. This one was pretty involved. It is a good one. It's not. It is not. Okay. There's no integration there. Eight over three x plus two. So the first one says find the equation of the tangent line at B. We can go back and do that another time, but I want to focus on the um, integration portion of it. It says show that the volume, okay, this is how they're read. Show that the volume of the solid formed when the shaded region, O, D, B, A, is rotated completely about the x-axis is 8 pi. So it's rotating completely about the x-axis, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes? Is that a B? That's, that's a three. three. Okay. You guys have your worksheets from last week? I don't know if I have Okay. So this thing wants me to rotate about the x-axis 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. Okay? Is it party or not party? No party. No party. Bless you. It's a horizontal rotation. So that tells me that everything must be in terms of, of x's, right? Okay, so I'm going to go. Now, my next question is, is it rotating about the place at which it touches? Yes. So is there a hole? No yes. hole. No hole. No. Yeah. A hole is an entirety. Oh, gotcha. So this thing rotates about the place it touches, so it's a solid. R squared. So, so it's just R squared. We're using the disk method instead of the washer method. Okay, so pi R squared. Okay. So literally what you need to figure out is... What are your walls and what's your ceiling and floor? So yeah. your left to right walls are going to go from x is what to x is what? Zero, zero to two. Very good. So we're going to go from zero to two. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is everybody okay? Yes. The next thing we're going to do is what's my ceiling? Here's, um, the curve. The curve, right? So we're going to write it like that, eight and then three x plus two. And then what's my floor? Zero, so minus zero doesn't really matter, right? And what do I do with this guy? Square. I square it. Dx. So now that's the hard part. We've done the hard part. Yes. The way I did it was I rewrote it as eight times three x plus two raised to the negative one. Is that that be okay? And then I raised negative one got raised to to two, so it was raised to the negative second power. Yes. So let's go through that process first. So we have pi, and then from zero to two. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I would have 8 times 3x plus 2, all of that is, that's the negative 1 to the second. Mm. Did that make sense? Yeah. So what do you think, if Nick did it wrong, but he's telling me the, all the right things, what do you think he might have forgotten? No, we don't foil because it's negative 2. What's the one thing that I you might see? Yeah, some of you might see it. Is that a negative one? Yeah, this, like, see, I, I raised this guy to a negative one. But still, the whole thing is squared. What, what one thing might, if I'm a teacher, if I'm a teacher, let's pretend I'm a teacher for a second. <laughs> if I'm a teacher and I'm looking to see perhaps what he might have done wrong, because that's what we need to recognize. Yes? If you plug in the zero at the end, 
Okay, that might be one of the things he did wrong. The zero at the end because it's something we might use. Use of the digit. No, we multiply. Power to power, we multiply. So not negative three, but negative two. But then when you integrate it. Yeah, oh, well, which way do you add? Yeah, because negative, negative one. Yeah. So he might have done negative three. I see one more thing that could potentially have happened. Yes? The substitution. The substitution you might have incorrectly done. I, see I didn't one. do that. That that would be it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but one more thing that I'm trying to pull. Do you guys see that eight has to be squared? I did that. Okay, so you did that. So yeah. Nick didn't do that wrong. I'm so proud of him. But he didn't use your substitution. Yeah. Okay, so as a teacher, things that I look for to see whether we can fix a mistake, okay? And, yeah. and those are like the four things that I recognize that could be the problem with these problems. So if I'm looking at this, I have from 0 to 2, I have 64. Do you guys agree? What am I going to do with that 64? I'm going to bring it out front. It's just going to go for the ride anyway. It gets in my way. So I'm going to pull the 64 out front. How do I get 64? Well, it's 8 squared, right? Yeah. Okay, and then this is 3x plus 2 to the negative 2, dx. Now, you can use the u-substitution method or the easy method that you guys somewhat like. You like, you like the u-substitution better. It's crazy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Some people love one, some people doesn't, don't love the other. Okay, so I'll do both ways just so you see it. Um, I know that I have to use u substitution because something to the negative 2 I cannot expand by FOIL. So I'm going to have to use that substitution method. And the, for the first, I'll do both ways. The first way I have 64 pi from 0 to 2, right? Um, and so I'm going to say u is 3x plus 2, du is 3, 3 dx, yeah. right? So for me to make this perfect, I would have to stick a 3 in front of the dx. And then pull out a one-third. And pull out a one-third. So I'm going to pull out the one-third, and I'm going to have u to the negative 2 du. Is everybody cool with that method? I mean, if you like the other method, I'll show both. So if I'm going to do this process, I have 64 thirds pi, and then that would be u to the negative 1 over negative 1, right? Mm -hmm. So if I clean her up a little bit, do you agree that that negative 1 can just come to the front? Does that make sense? Yeah. So I have negative 64 yeah. pi over 3. And then what was u? u is 3 one, plus. Yeah, and I'm going to swing it down already <coughs> to the first power. And I'm going to assess that from 0 to 2. Can you show it the other oh, way? Hmm? Can you show it the other way? Yeah, I will. Let me finish and I'll show you the way. Okay, so here I'm going to plug in my 2, right? Mm -hmm. So what do I get? I get 1 over... Eight. Eight. eight, so negative 64 thirds pi, and that would be eight, one over eight, minus, plugging in zero. Yeah, be careful, right? So one over two. All right, are we, going, are we doing okay? And so get a common denominator, four over, four over, yeah, that's okay, because it's negative out front. We're okay with that. So. So what I have going on here is negative 64 over 3 pi, and that becomes over 8, right? So you guys agree it's 4 eighths? Yeah. So 1 minus 4, it's negative 3 eighths. So negative 3 eighths. Okay, we're good. So start reducing a bit. Two negatives make a positive, that's okay. The threes will cancel, and 8 goes into 64 eight times. The answer is 8 pi. And that's what they told us. Want us to have. Now, as promised, I'll show you the other way to do the integral, okay? So, <coughs> the other way to do the integral, um, I actually should do it right here where you see it a little easier. So the other way to do the integral of this, right? So if I'm looking at that, I have 64 pi, right? Mm -hmm. And so the integral of this, I just take the integral, so I have um, 3x plus 2 to the negative 1 over negative 1, and then what's the derivative of the inside? Three. Three, so put it right here. Okay. Are we good? Yep. And then we're going to go from zero to two. two. So it's the same concept. This can come out as a negative 64 pi over three. And then really this is one over three x plus two. Uh -huh. And the rest is the same. You plug in the two, you plug in the zero, subtract, and then multiply. Yes. All right. Are we cool? Are we good? Yes? I love it. Good stuff. 
All right. Um, let's pick another one further on that's like a higher number, like 2010-ish. That way we have um, one that's more recent. A toughie. Yeah, let's do a toughie. But really, these aren't tough so much. I mean, if you get the concept. We're going to do May, June 2010 slash 12. Okay, so this one is May, June 2010 slash 12. Okay, from 1 to 3. And this is A over X. A over X. That's what it says. Not nice, huh? Mm. Okay, so this says, the diagram shows a part of the curve Y equals A over X, where A is a positive constant. Does that matter? It might. It might. So we need to read every line, right? A is positive. Given the volume obtained when the shaded region is rotated 360 about the x-axis is 24 pi, find the value of A. So it says, given the volume obtained when this shaded region, this is all shaded, is rotated, is rotated about the x-axis. So this is rotating about the x-axis, right? And it mm -hmm. says 360. And they actually tell me that the, the volume is 24 pi. Notice the last one said, show that the answer was 8 pi. Yeah. This one says, this is 24 pi, solve for A. It's set up a little differently. Is everybody OK? OK. So we have to think out loud to ourselves here for a minute. We have to say a couple things. Um, what I need to know is it rotates about the x-axis, party or not? No party. No party. So x values. So x values, good. Okay. And is it attached to the place at which it rotates? It is. So therefore, yes. there are no holes. So it's disk method. Yes. Those are the things that go through your brain as you start to set up, right? Yes. So as we know, we're going to go pi. And the a and b are very obvious here. One and three. One to three. Okay. That was nice of them, right? Yeah. And then what is the actual radius of this thing? Well, the ceiling is this thing, A over X. A over X. And minus zero, right? Minus so just A over X. Yes. And really, it's A over X squared. Squared. DX. DX. Okay. Okay, so you want to go? You feel good? Okay, good. So what we're going to do is remember, do our algebra first. So if I'm looking at this, I got pi from 1 to 3. Do you agree? A squared over x squared? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. How shall I rewrite that? A, a squared times? x to the negative 1. Uh-huh. x to the negative 2. Or ne ne negative right, 2, right. yes. And do you agree I could take the a squared out front? Yes. Might as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's just a number. From 1 to 3 is x to the negative 2. Is that good so far? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So the actual integral of x to the negative second, I don't need to use your substitution. I just do old-fashioned integrate. So I have a squared pi, right? Yep. x to the negative 1 over negative 1. Everybody OK? From 1 to 3. And then you're going to plug in your 1 and your 3, and you're going to set it equal to 24 pi and solve for a. Yeah. And what I'm going to do before I do that is I'm going to say this negative can come to the front. Get it out of the way. And this x to the negative 1 can flip down. So really what I'm looking at is negative a squared pi and then 1 over x from 1 to 3. Is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. And because this negative is just a number, so I'm going to pull it to the front, make it go for the right. And then x to the negative 1 can flip down. Yeah. But how, how could you put the negative? Because it's in the denominator, now you're just moving it up? Well, because if you divide by a negative 1 or multiply by a negative 1, it's the same answer. So essentially, you just multiplied that whole thing by negative. I actually took this and divided it by, I moved this negative 1 over here, is what I did. Okay. In my mind. And then I said, oh, that's just a negative answer. Does that make sense? Well, really, it's that whole thing over negative 1 because it's one term. Uh-huh. Right. And a then that a. over negative 1 is mm -hmm. negative A, yeah. Yeah, yes. Sense. So when you plug in the thing, would it be like 1 third minus 1 yes. minus Yes. Good, good question. So I have a squared, negative a squared pi. I'm going to do 1 third minus 1 over 1. That's exactly right. Because that negative, that negative a squared pi is something that I'm multiplying the end to it. 
Okay, so one third minus three thirds, basically. Negative two thirds? Yeah. So I keep going. I've got negative, oh, I'll just show the work. I was going to do it in my head, sorry. It's, it happens. Okay, so now I have positive. That's what I was going to say. Are you guys with me there? So if I'm looking at this, I know this is positive. So I've got, if I like clean it up a little bit, I've got positive two thirds a squared pi. And that's going to equal 24 pi. Do you agree? Pi equals pi on both sides, get rid of it. So that's nice. So I've got 2 thirds a squared is 24. I personally like to multiply by 3, divide by 2. Yeah. You multiply by the reciprocal, basically. So what happens? 24 times 3 is 72. 72 divided by 2 is 36. So square root of 36, so 6, a 6. Six. Yeah, because remember when we take the square root we solve it, it's positive and negative. But it says it's positive A, so it's positive. It has to be positive. Right. Does that make sense? That's why I kind of emphasized that when I was reading the directions. Does it matter? And you told me it could, and yeah. it did. So A is indeed 6. How many points is that worth? Thank you. Four. Um, That's yeah. a good, easy four points. No? It's, yes. it's a lot of words. Some of the others, right. Yes. Well, they give you a problem like this, but then they say, Reflect it over the y-axis. You're having a party. Everything must be in terms of, of y. That would really complicate It would thing. be very complicated. That's why I said very, very far and few between. <coughs> so this is like the, the small percentage that, that they'll have reflected over the y, and then the small percentage that of those problems, they're going to be um, really involved. Yeah. OK, so I'm going to look up one. If there's none on that, you want me to do another one? Is that what you're looking for? I'll do it. OK, can we do the, the one on the next? Yeah, of course. I was going to look for a Y one, but that's not oh, the one. Yeah. can do a Y one. Is I that don't think there's any in there in that packet. There might be, but I don't think so. Is that May, June 2010 slash 13? Yeah. Okay. We can do it. We can do it. Yeah. Yeah, oh. I need it. That's it. Right. So do you see how they're worded? The question earlier was how, how are they going to ask us that? It's pretty consistent. And it's always 360 degrees, not 180 degrees. No, it's never 180. It's yeah. always a full rotation. Because you're making it three dimensional. Cut it in half at the very end. Yeah. Yes. You're making it three dimensional, though. Does that make sense? Mm hmm. Okay, I'm sure that's a really bad rendition of what you're trying to. So we kind of have to do this one. This one actually says find the coordinates of A, B, and M. Yeah. So let's kind of talk about what A, B, and M are. What is M? Did they describe it? Sorry. You will. That was not very nice of me. It says what? Minimum. Point. The minimum. Oh, very cool. Minimum. So let's do I just, just for, you know, fun. Um, so it says I need to find A, B, and M. So we have X plus 4X to the negative 1. Right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to find y prime dy dx, however you want to call it. So y prime 1 plus negative 4, basically. Yeah. x to the negative, negative, negative. 2. Yeah. Going the other way. Mm -hmm. So I know it gets screwy with the head. So now I'm looking at this and I've got um, setting it to 0, as Nick told me to do. So I have 1 minus 4 over x squared equals 0. So far, so good. I would add that fraction over. So I would have 1 equals 4 over x squared. Uh, I would take the x squared up here. And Positive or negative 2. But, but which one is it going to be? Yeah, it has to be between 1 and 4, though, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. A is here, B is here. Right. It has to be between 1 and 4. So it's quite, I think, hopefully obvious that x equals in this case. So you are going to plug it back in the original, just like you said. So 2 plus 4 over 2 would be 4. So m is 2, 4. Yes. That's really good. Okay, so it wants me to rotate that thing about the x-axis, so no party, right? 
Right. No party. Darn. Are we, um, the next question I have is, is there, is it connected to the place at which it's rotating? No. It is not. So there is indeed a hole. Mm -hmm. so that's what I don't really understand what we mean. Okay, so do you see, like if I color this, do you see this? This is what we're rotating, right? This mm -hmm. thing? Is it touching the place at which it rotates? So the place at which it rotates is this line here. So this thing is literally going to come out and go down here and go through. So it's going to be a large space of a void in the middle that has no volume. So if we're trying to find the volume of this thing, we don't want to include this whole air space. Like my reference with the donuts. If I'm eating them, you don't want to count the whole as part of the calories. Please. <laughs> okay, so what do we have to do? We have to use the washer method. Okay, so we're going to go, and since it's no party, we're okay. We're going to go from X to X and then ceiling to floor kind of deal. So what is my what is my X to X? My, my one, to four. Four. one to four. One to four. How do we get those? Well, we found them with A and B. Yeah. That's pretty typical, okay? And so what is my outer radius? My outer radius goes from the very top to the place at which I rotate. Five. So this is five. To negative five? No, nope. to where I rotate. Zero. So five to zero. So it's five minus zero. Squared. Mm -hmm. Squared. Yeah. yeah. Oh, could we like draw that out to visualize what it would look like um, when you rotate? You're really pushing it here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can do it, I think. So it's going to be a reflection of it, basically. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somewhat. So this thing kind of comes down, flat edge on top, flat edge on bottom. Kind of like the, the donut with the outer edge being flat. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. It's a donut with the outer edge being flat. Just square down. I don't even know what it would look like three-dimensionally. I mean, I don't know how to draw it three-dimensionally. Maybe I could draw it on, maybe I could find a, there is something that I'm sure would rotate it for me. Make it out of Billy said she would go to drafting for me and, and do it. I'll have her do this one. <laughs> so, okay. So you guys told me the ceiling of this is five minus zero squared minus, now what's the floor of this thing? It is, it's actually the whole line. Because you don't know if you're at M, you don't know if you're here, you don't know if you're here, you don't know where you are. So you're at every single spot that it could potentially be. So it's that whole line. So it's going to be minus x plus 4 over x squared, right? Why minus? Because it's minus 0. Because the floor is 0, so yeah. So it's outside radius squared minus inside radius mm -hmm. squared, right? Yeah. What's the inside? I'll show oh, you. Oh, okay, so never mind. Here to here is outside. So green is outside. Okay, it's below and then the here to here is. is inside. Okay. Oh, that makes more sense. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I should draw it every time. Yeah. Okay. There we go. And it this makes is more sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So it's that. It's really that minus zero. So yeah. we just didn't yeah. write that. Okay. Is that cool? Are we good? Oh, minus zero. There we go. <laughs> now we got it. So. <laughs> this one's nice. They were nice here. Not so nice here. I have to. I have to foil it. I know. So I'm gonna leave it four over x, like so. So that minus has to go through the whole thing, right? Be careful with that. So what is this? X times x is x squared. So, well, 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 let's look. 4 over x times x is what? 4 over x. Four. This is 4. Um, four. Yeah. Four. So, 4 over x times x is 4. Plus 4 four. over x times so x. Plus, so, 4 plus eight. 4. So, eight. plus 8. Nice. Plus oh, because it's 4x over x and the x's cancel. Right. Oh. And then this is going to be plus 16 over x squared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Squared. I was yeah. As a teacher, remember, I'm pretending again. If I'm looking at mistakes that people make, if they get the wrong answer in the end, right here, this, this step right here, the next step here, mm -hmm. is where I see lots of mistakes. What are they going to forget to do? Uh, put the negative. Distribute that negative through. Yeah. That's so important. And so when I'm looking at the final answer, 
a lot of times what I'll do is I'll start at the bottom and look at the answer and then go pull and then go back up to see whether they did the, whether they got it from their neighbor or whether they actually got it from the steps. <laughs> you know, so that's kind of what I'm looking at mm -hmm. as I'm grading it. So what do we do now? Combine like terms, distribute this through. Okay. So, so 17 minus x squared, and then this is where I would bring that up. Yep. Now I would integrate. <laughs> you notice a lot of algebra happens first. So 17x minus x to the third over 3 minus 16x to the negative 1 over negative 1 from 1 to 4. Don't forget pi. And I think you can finish this. You're going to plug in 4. You're going to plug in 1 and subtract them. And then multiply by pi. Are we good? That one was tough. It's a good tough one. Yeah. How many points is it worth? Um, five and six. Five for part I and six for part I. Good I like it. But it, you know what? If you have a comfort level. It is really like five or five points. Is it like two for like solving and three for like Yeah. Yeah. So what makes me happy about this is I think you guys have a comfort level with this stuff. I think you guys will be able to be. And if these are weighted pretty heavy in the most recent past, you might find that this might be an 11 point question still. Maybe I'd love to have a party on the test. It would be a party on the test, but we don't want any surprise parties, so that's why we went over it. Those are pity points for trying the problem. There are pity points. Well, the thing is, if you knew to set them equal to each other, typically a point, right? Even if you got it wrong, if you use, you're kind of messed up. If you get it wrong, like you get one and three, yeah. and you use one and three over here, you know, it can only go downhill because the answer is going to be wrong. But the fact is, they won't double mark you. You're wrong, but then they, your answer reflects what you did. Yeah. So, but then, so what we did was, since we knew that A and B were both, the Y values are both five, so we plugged in for five and got our X values, but you could have also just set them equal to each other. Which is what, basically what we did. And then you would get two values for X, so then you're going to have your X value and five for A, and then your X value and five for B. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay.